So level one first, I've entered new territory. This is the world of luxury computer cases. How do you review a luxury computer case or designer computer case? At the very least, it's a designer computer case because it's unique and unusual. And what on earth have I gotten myself into? This is the ultimate Threadripper workstation. This is easily 10, maybe $15,000 of hardware, depending on, you know, if you buy stuff on sale and a whole bunch of other things. It's a, it's a computer case with lots and lots of room. And uh, I've made some unusual modifications, but like usual with most of the modifications that I do, they're inside rather than like some crazy case modder because my modifications are all about functionality. This is the ultimate developer workstation. It's Threadripper, we're ripping all kinds of threads. It's the 1950X, I know there's the 2990WX, but I don't have one of those, so. 16 cores, 32 threads, you can still do a lot with it. And honestly, you know, Threadripper, not really, especially when we're talking about the 32 core model, it's really more like pros. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the, uh, the deep cool quad stellar, which is the case that this is in. All right, so full disclosure, Deepcool reached out and said, hey, we know that you hung around at Computex looking at the Deepcool Quad Stellar. Would you like one? And it's like, mm, okay, sounds good. It's not something that I would buy for myself. I mean, it's a, it's a $400 US at the time of this video case, four to $500, I think, looking at the Amazon price history. It's more art piece than computer case, really. Um, this, you know, section of the case, like if you imagine this is gone and this is gone, this is a pretty standard tower configuration inside here, inside this part. There's a ton of three and a half inch drive storage here. So that layout is maybe a little unusual. There's eight, uh, well, nine three and a half inch bays and each of the three and a half inch bays can support two and a half inch drives as well. And then there's a two and a half inch bay on the top here, which I've got an Intel Optane 900P installed in. This is outfitted with some eight terabyte mechanical hard drives in a RAID Z pool. So yeah, cause that's just how I roll. Uh, you can show off your graphics card in the top here. It comes with a PCI Express extension cable. So it's a PCI Express by 16, but you can mount up to three graphics cards in the top here if you get PCI Express extension cables, but I've modded it. I'll show you more about that in a minute. And then in the bottom part here, you know, it's tempered glass, but the tempered glass is held on magnetically, which is a nice touch, you know. Some of their prior, case, uh, some of their prior cases, I think, used uh, thumb screws, but, you know, this is set up here. Now I'm using a 360 millimeter Intermax radiator to cool my 16 core overclocked Threadripper CPU. Um, right now I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM in here, I think, but, you know, 128 gigabytes, I wouldn't say no. I've also overloaded the PCI Express bus. So this has more PCI Express connectivity than will physically fit in here. But that's getting ahead of myself. That's not something that we're gonna, I'll show you that in a minute. Now, in terms of like the build and what was my experience with this case and you know, what else is going on here? Well, the build actually, it was pretty easy. There's a lot of room. Like I didn't even, you can take this whole top part off to make it easier to get in this area to install your motherboard tray. I didn't have to do that. I could just slide in the motherboard and mount it. And it was basically okay. It is designed for, you know, a custom loop or an all-in-one closed loop cooler. There's room in the front for a 360 millimeter radiator. Where I'm using my 360 millimeter radiator, it's not really designed for that. It's really designed for a, uh, you know, like a 240 in this area, 280 millimeter would not fit. There's there's a vent here that's drawing in air, but this vent is a little ways off the fans. And this vent is really also only designed for a 240 millimeter radiator. That said, running my 360 millimeter radiator, haven't really had any heat problems or airflow issues or anything like that. And the 360 millimeter radiator works better here than in the front. So I've got the whole front of this configured with intake fans. And these are configured for intake as well. There's an intake fan here and here and here to try to force all of the air toward the back. And let me tell you, when this thing is running full tilt, it does get quite warm. 
Now, I don't think that uh, there are screw holes that will line up for you if you mount a 360 millimeter radiator. I had to drill mine, but it worked fine. I had just barely enough room between the Intermax cooler and the fans and you know clearance for the motherboard. So if you had a thicker radiator than this in this area, it's not gonna work. In terms of like motherboard and peripherals, this is built on the Gigabyte Designator X399 threader for motherboard. This is a super high-end motherboard. And the reason that I'm using that motherboard is because I've hacked in Thunderbolt support on Threadripper. Yeah, you're, Thunderbolt on Threadripper is not a thing yet. I have forced the issue. I've sort of through force of will. And probably you can figure out how to do it yourself too if you can modify UEFI and just load some ROMs and flash some stuff. But anyway, that's why I put this motherboard in this case so I could do terrible, terrible things with Thunderbolt. Oh, that's a story for another time. Yeah. So there's a full fan controller in here that all the fans hooked up to as well as RGB. So this case has some really cool sort of nifty designer features. One, the front opens up. It opens up kind of like, uh, I don't know, you ever watch Alien? It's sort of like a reverse Alien thing. The flaps open up for additional airflow. And it's motorized, so you can control that from an app. So there's a little board on the inside that you can reset and pair with the deep cool application and control uh, the LED lighting for the case as well as the flaps. But it supports di digital and F uh, 5050 RGB strips. So you can just plug that directly into your motherboard and control the LEDs directly from your motherboard. And the uh, flaps will open up automatically, you know, depending on temperature. So let's talk about temperature for a second for this case. In the default configuration, when I built this, the case was running a little warm. So I, this came from a completely ordinary tower case and it was running about five to 10 degrees C warmer in the tower case, especially in the graphics card area. The graphics card area was surging up to about 20 degrees C warmer. Now I'm using a Vega GPU, which is basically a space heater. And so I don't think the airflow was really the best in this top area. I could take off the tempered glass side panel and pretty much immediately the temperature would drop five to 10 degrees. So I pulled this fan off of the fan controller and patched it into the motherboard and set a fan profile so that this fan would run at a higher RPM. And that pretty much took care of all of my um, cooling issues in this particular area. Deep cool comes, like the quad cellar comes with a case for this area. I might put a beefier fan in this area or just, you know, tweak the RPMs so that it runs a little cooler. In terms of thermals, the only really puzzling thing was that the 360 millimeter radiator mounted in the front did a worse job cooling the Threadripper than at the bottom here. And I think that the airflow at the front for the 360 millimeter radiator, because the, the front here is not really like super open where the power button is because you hit the, the deep cool logo and that's what the power button does. And I don't think that it breathes all that well in that area. So most of the airflow was from you know, two fans up here, one up here and one down here. In terms of opening the flaps, I mean, you can breathe around the flaps. There's, you know, there's a gap here. And so you're gonna get some airflow. It really didn't make much more of a difference in terms of cooling the case with flaps open or closed. So it's cool though to show your friends. Now, in terms of mods, what did I do? Well, the PCI Express layout on this motherboard is by 16 by eight to the threader per CPU, by four PCI Express 2.0 to the chipset, and then by 16 and by eight again to the threader per CPU. So we've got by 16 by eight, we're not gonna count that one, by 16 by eight. I wanted to run a lot of PCI Express peripherals. So I do VFIO hardware pass through. Fedora Linux is the host operating system for this. It's, it's gonna be a DevOps, a developer workstation. That's gonna be a part two video. if. If I get enough interest and likes in the video and share and views and all this kind of stuff, we'll do a part two that talks about DevOps and Docker automation and you know all this crazy like super boring developer stuff that no one cares about, but is something that you can show off for actual developer workstation stuff. Maybe we'll do that on the Linux channel. That'd probably be a good place to do like DevOps. I'm gonna kick off 30 Docker containers and test compile the kernel and that's, I spent a lot of time doing that to the point that it's like, not fun. But I'll do a video for you guys because it shows off Threadripper's power and all the cool stuff that you can do with Threadripper. So what's the final verdict on this case? It's an expensive, fun toy. Look, if you're a developer like me and you're basically dead inside from having to deal with all of the 
ridiculous insanity that other people inflict on you because they can't be bothered to think about common sense things. Well, I'm not gonna say this case is not gonna cheer you up. I mean, how cool is it you walk in and you know, people in your office and it's like, oh, can you help me debug this? Uh, oh my God, what is that? Oh, that's my computer. Oh, uh, yeah, it's really? Yeah, check this out. This has been a lot more fun than I expected, honestly. I mean, it's, it's a crazy sort of designer set piece. It looks cool, it's kind of functional. You would buy this if you want a set piece. It's ATX, so it's upgradable. You know, other than some little issues putting the build together, things like the rear I.O. shield. Now the Gigabyte motherboard that I'm using has a built-in I.O. shield, but like the I.O. shield area is kind of finicky, and so it'd probably be a little more challenging if your motherboard didn't have a built-in I.O. shield. Uh, the thermals were, were okay, but not spectacular. But the design, the aesthetic, I mean, if you're into a design like this, I mean, it's pretty impressive looking, I think. I mean, it does look very science fiction. It looks like something off of the Enterprise. And that's probably the, the, the demographic, the market that Deep Cool is going for. It's a cool case. It really is. I think that I would, I mean, I think if things were a little different, this would actually probably be something that I would buy if I were buying just a crazy high-end system for like, you know, a five-year use lifetime. And I kind of wanted to show it off. Like I kind of wanted to put it in my office and then the people that come in to bother me about character sets or forgotten passwords or accidentally deleting their bash RC or whatever, uh, it would probably help me get through my day a little better. I mean, might be oversharing here a little bit, but Deep Cool I think has done a good job aesthetically. It's pretty easy to work on because you know each of the panels is removable and you can remove the tempered glass for a little bit more breathability. It's pretty cool for modders because modders can do things like take the panels off or do something with the tempered glass. So if you if you pick up one of these and you do a build with one of these, you've got to show it off in the forums at level one. I would love to see how people are using this. I mean, to be sure, it takes up a ton of room. This is not something that you're going to put on your desk. I thought about modding this thing so I could mount it vertically. Yeah, I mean, it looks kind of like a rocket or something vertically, and if I flip the fans so that it's kind of a chimney effect, all the heat comes out the top, and take the panels off, I think this would look really cool behind my monitor tree. But that's just me. I'm, I'm rambling now, so that means it's time to go. I'm Wendell, and I'm going to hang out in the level one forums. And if you want to see what ridiculous, ridiculous developer operations you can get into with Threadripper with its 16 or 24 or 32 cores, definitely let me know in the comments or by sharing or, you know, whatever. If you liked the video, upvote. If you didn't, you know, downvoting is fine too. Just, you know, engage and let's see what interesting things we can get into. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you in the level one forums.